This part will cover virtual function calls. Uh, we talked previously about uh, virtual calls and about the tables, uh, specifically in the inheritance part and also in the object creation part. Um, in this uh, section, we would cover more the practical how to deal with virtual calls, how they look like in the assembly, and also would cover with a demo. A real example that we will see one of the virtual calls and we will statically go over the assembly and we'll try to find the correct function that was called in this scenario. So uh, let's start with the example. So uh, in many cases when we see uh, assembly code um, it actually has virtual calls and with a short and very simple example, I'll, I will show you how it looks like in the assembly with a short overview of the beginning. So in this uh, code, we have a very simple uh, code that has a person being uh, created and there is a virtual call uh, called uh, print age. This uh, virtual uh, function was uh, uh, defined in the uh, class creation. And uh, if we can compile this code and in the uh, function call of the print age, we would have actually a virtual call. So if you want to examine the assembly, so first uh, we have the pointer to the person, which is the, our object, and we examined the structure of the object. So it has the V table uh, in the first eight bytes. Then we have all the members of the object stored afterwards. Um, but this is in general how the uh, pointer looks like. Um, afterwards, we have the assignment of the vtable to the first eight bytes of the object structure in memory. So we can see here in this line that the vtable is stored in rex. Then uh, we can see later that we have a virtual call. Now, in this case, we don't have any members. But uh, we will focus more on the virtual call and how to identify and see what happens. So in this case, you can see that the virtual call is actually taking uh, the um, vtable pointer and then choose a specific offset. In this case, it will be eight, and then it calls this function. So how we can really understand that? So you can see we are using brackets uh, on the rex plus eight. So what happens is that we access the value in this address, and this address actually points to uh, the vtable. So what happens here is that the function that was called, in our case, was print age. So it is being taken from the vtable, and then it was being uh, executed. Now, the offset in this case is 8. It can be like different offset, it depends on what function you need. Uh, but this is in general how a virtual uh, function call look like. Uh, we only have like four lines of assembly here, but in a lot of binaries, this is a very, very hard uh, job to understand what exactly is the function that was called. So let's uh, continue with the virtual calls and understand how to examine a more complex uh, assembly uh, code and binary uh, with a short demo. So after we uh, saw some examples uh, and we examined the basic virtual call, and we now will see what happens when we look at a real binary and uh, how we can identify and understand the virtual call uh, that we want to analyze. So here I took uh, an example. When uh, we go over this code, we can see that in here we have a virtual call uh, this uh, virtual call uh, vtable and function is stored in rex um, and in order to understand what exactly is the function that was called in this case, we would need to go uh, further and analyze uh, the binary and the uh, assembly code in order to understand who assigns the um, vtable in rex and what exactly is stored in offset 8. So in this case, if I mark rex, I can go uh, back and see that rex is the return value of this function call in here. 
So because ix is the return value of this function, we need to understand what exactly was uh, returned. And with this information, we can understand and analyze um, the virtual call that we have. In this case, uh, the function call is uh, using a shared pointer. Shared pointer uh, is something that will not be covered during this class. Um, but a shared pointer uh, is a feature that provides the option to have an object that can be shared um, and have a few um, instances. Um, in this case, I will not dive uh, further into uh, how to analyze those shared pointers and what can be done with them. But I would add that this uh, function call would return to us the uh, space sheep uh, object pointer. So in REX, we would have the pointer to um, a space sheep object. So we can rename this um, local variable to a pointer to space sheep. After we uh, see that this local variable stores the pointer that we need, uh, we can see that Further in this line, uh, the IX pointer would access the first uh, offset and will store it in IX. This means that this line would take the vtable from the uh, object that we have here and store it in IX. Later on, like we uh, see in this line, there is another access to the vtable with offset 8. And this would be uh, the function that would be called. So in order to analyze the vtable and the functions inside of it, uh, we would need to analyze the spaceship object first. So you might remember the spaceship object from previous parts of this class, uh, but I would go over the constructor of spaceship in order to find the vtable and the correct function. So if I open the function uh, window, I can choose a spaceship uh, this is the spaceship constructor so I uh, pressed the uh, control and P in order to open this window and now I can choose the uh, constructor so this is the wrapper I will go to the constructor itself now we have the constructor of the spaceship, but we are not interested in all the constructor parts. We are only interested in the vtable part of this um, constructor. So we can see that in this uh, line, we are assigning the vtable. And here we can see that it is being stored in the first offset of the spaceship object. So uh, now we understand that this is the relevant uh, V table that we need, and this is what we will analyze. So if I go and uh, to the address of the V table, I can see uh, that this is the V table that is used in our for the virtual call that we have. So the first uh, function is this one, game object draw. This is something that uh, you might uh, be familiar with, but exactly like, as I said previously, a spaceship inherits from a game object. And this is something we covered in the basic inheritance part. Uh, and we can see that this one is a virtual uh, call, virtual function call, and this will be uh, in offset eight, which means the second function. So uh, after we analyze the vtable and we analyze also the virtual call, we know that this function is the function that was called from the um, virtual call that we analyzed from here. So uh, if we want to uh, make it clear, we can add a comment. Okay, this is the virtual call that was that can be called here. Um, and we can say, OK, we're done. But because uh, we don't want to leave the uh, assembly code like this, even though we understood what function would be used in this case, uh, we do want to have a more um, like a clear and more like uh, built uh, solution for those cases when we have the vtables. 
In order to do that, what we can do is to go back to um, the V table and we can create um, a structure of the V table and then change the assembly offset to point to the correct function in the V table. So if we create the structure uh, for the V table for each iteration and each uh, function call that would use this V table, we can just like change the assembly to points to the correct um, like uh, element in our uh, structure. And I will show you uh, the easiest way to do so. So of course you can open a structure by yourself and just like add each function that you can see in here in this V table, but I think it will take too, too much time. Uh, you have the option to do it with a script, so you can use either Python or IDC in order to do that, or use some header file if you have it. But if you don't have it and the Vtable is too large to do it manually or with a, if you don't know how to uh, write script yet, so you can just like mark the Vtable that you want to uh, create a structure for, press a uh, right click, and then you can create structure uh, from selection. This will create the structure that you want um, in the structure tab uh, from the Vtable that we marked. Of course, this option is valid for a lot of other things uh, in the binary. So also you can create struct from other selections that are not Vtables. Um, so try it sometimes when you uh, work on different binaries and you would see how helpful it could be. So uh, I pressed like the create structure and now we have a structure here with all the functions that uh, we saw previously. I would add that this function look a little bit weird because this is using the uh, mangled names. Uh, and if you remember in the beginning of the training, I told you that if we want to see the names differently, we can press the mangled names and then change it to names. It will make like the uh, binary much clearer and you can see the functions in a more human readable way. Um, but and because we do it automatically, this is how it creates those things. Even though it looks different, you can see that the name of the functions are clear, just like the variables and arguments are all part of this thing. Um, I will not cover how exactly it will be mangled or not, but I think that for an automatic solution, it will be good enough to understand what we are looking at. Of course, again, scripts can always help you get it more clear and uh, much, much uh, easier to understand, but for now we will go with this. So this is just like a random structure with an address. We will change the name so we know what exactly is the structure. So in our case, this will be a struct for um, spaceship v table. Um, and press OK. So now we have this uh, structure with the virtual um, table. Let's go back. So I will show you how you can use this structure inside your uh, virtual core uh, in the assembly. Oh, sorry. Just move to here. I want to go back to the... Okay. Um, so now we are back on the correct place in the assembly. So we have the comment here, but because we created the structure, we can now right click, do a structure offset, then choose uh, this V table that we created. Again, because um, we already created the V table, we can see that here we have uh, the name of the uh, virtual uh, call that will be used in this case. And now it is not that hard to analyze this part of the assembly. Now I will add a few parts uh, before like we finish this uh, demo that in this case we only work with static analysis of the binary. If we would want to do dynamic analysis of course that the work would be much faster but in many cases you would not be able to debug and execute your binary if you do malware or if you do embedded uh, firmware so sometimes it's not something you can do uh, that easily 
And for that, we would also need to understand how to do everything uh, statically. Um, so in this case, uh, what we did, uh, just to summarize everything, we saw that we have a virtual uh, function call in here. We went backward and understood from where the V table was uh, used and what set up the V table. And then we just went to the constructor, analyzed the V table, found the correct function uh, with the correct offset, uh, created the structure, and now we collated the assembly with the structure we created. So I choose like an example that is not uh, too large and that because we have symbols, it's much uh, easier. But think about other cases when you have a lot of virtual calls without symbols, this can be very complex. So virtual calls is a very important uh, subject to understand when you do a C++ uh, reversing because this would repeat itself in a lot of places in the binary and in most of the binaries like you would have virtual calls. So it's important to understand that it's just like a matter of like understanding the whole uh, hierarchy of the object to understand which object is uh, where and where is the constructor and then from then you can just like analyze the v table and understand the virtual call so thank you very much i uh, hope you learn from it and a uh, good luck